Yeah, so just inviting everyone here and everyone that's coming to into this space knowing nothing is wrong with you. Dropping all the, as best you can, and with gentleness, exquisite gentleness. Be with the truth. Nothing is wrong with you. There is no wrong. And if you'd like, perhaps inviting deities, guides, ancestors, and those ancestors, and only those ancestors who delight in you, who prayed for you, who watch over you to be with you as you move into a posture that will support you or a practice that will support you. And falling in a homecoming of silence. Not quiet not the privilege of no sounds of disruption or meeting your ears. But this is a silence, a stillness. That is not reactive. that neither comes or goes, is there. Moving into that awareness, it's there. As you bring your attention to breath, Bring that attention to that stillness within that has never been abused, never been maligned. Never been told you're too much or too little. Taking a few moments now. What would you say if I told you I smoked? No worries. I'm just going to put everyone on you, not to silence you, but that it might support us in practice. And just returning to that silence, that quiet, the quiet wasn't bothered by that. Why it wasn't bothered by that. So sinking in now to the quiet, to the silence that is beyond quiet.
venturing into stillness. Venturing into stillness. Allowing that stillness to be. Nothing to do. As thoughts arise, tune for them and silence within. Gently returning your awareness to wherever you're resting on the earth, perhaps opening your eyes if you've closed them. Perhaps looking around and seeing how it feels now how it feels in the body, how it feels in your environment. I thought this offering might be particularly useful in that we're, you know, having jumped across a Christmas tree or 53. Um, now there's the grabbing to get a running start so we can be brand new in the new year. <laughs> and perhaps the gift of the practice being we don't need to be new because we're not old because nothing is wrong with us. And I know that that gift of stillness has been an antidote for me as the grabbiness of Gregorian calendar. <laughs> you know, you gotta go fast because we don't all lose 50 pounds in one month. And uh, we're gonna all go to the gym and work out eight hours and uh, we gonna get enough supplements to fill a truck. And uh, yeah, we gonna 
And of course, when February comes, we all be sad because we didn't go to the gym every day. We bought the supplements, but they still in the bottle. Yeah. What would it be? How would we be if nothing was wrong with us? And so I wanted to share a bit about what I've been talking about this moment. Because um, Zenju Earthland Manual has the book Opening to Darkness. And in it, I think, you know, she does the dark mothers and she has a bunch of things happening in that. But the essential question is always the question of this practice. And in fact, it's not just a question, it's just for me a pulsing invitation um, invitation to mystery, to questioning. And she talks about the dark and what we've been given with that word, dark. There are dark times, so you know that's not good, right? There's angel food cake and there's devil food cake. We, we know which is which, you know? Um, I've been very interested, particularly in these last few months about the way the languages we've been given and, and how they imprison us or support our freedom. And so often we can forget while we running and doing that we're using words that have been put in our mouths that are coming out of a certain understanding of the world, of energy, of mystery. And when it's calling forth things, it's calling forth things. And are we aware of what it's calling forth? Often in my own experience of my particular disability, thank you, Laura, what, what? You know, because I was walking around, nothing wrong with me. You know, you need a, you need a Dharma sister to say, let me talk to you for a minute. You know, if you curled up in your bed and can't walk, and if you do too much, you might have a, you know, that that might be a thing. You know, that, that that's the power of community. You know, we connect with each other enough to say, let me let me talk to you, sweetie. Let me talk to you. And you know this person don't mean you any harm. They're not trying to do nothing to you. You know, so pain being one of them, you know, right? It's so a one word. And even the way it comes out of my pain. So so that's a 10, right? And if I'm not feeling a 10, I'm not really in pain. So I can go to work. I can or, and, or if I go to work instead of doing the eight, I'm gonna do the 10 or the 12. And because because I'm not in pain, you know, um, I'm I'm not being beat up in a limo, so I'm not. Uh, that's not abuse. That's not. You know, I'm not. That's not abuse. Um, you know. So, in this, particularly at this time, dark and what it brings forth. And I love so much of the language because the invitation is, you know, we were all born in the darkness, right? We were all in the dark. 
that's where we develop. That's, you know, or do, or do we think that, you know, there was a, somebody had a flashlight and that's how we could make it do what it do. So what is the illumination of darkness? You know, she asked some amazing questions that I loved and I want to share because because this is going to be my practice what would it be like if we learned to love the forever darkness without wanting it to serve us in some way? Give us something or without waiting for the dark to lighten up? What would it mean if we dwelled in darkness available to the transformation much like we did in our mother's womb? What if we welcome darkness as an ambiguous state of being alive? To me, it's can we be in mystery? Can we be in the I don't know? Can we create? I'm just, I see you, Adrian. That's that global majority. We be we are jamming that invitation, calling in the mystery of art. The mist, because that's where it gets born. And what does it mean that we are encouraged to be fearful? You know, darkness is illicit. Doing it in the dark, doing it in the park is erotic. You know, what you doing with that door shut in the dark? So I wanted to offer that what would be the practice, the dark practice. I'm not talking about going to India or someplace to be, you know, I'm, I'm talking about what would be the dark practice. Because even in, in different traditions, right, hell is dark. It's black, and often the denizens of the dark are black. Yeah. And it's, the question is, darkness invites awareness, right? Now, I want to know if something is going to get me, but that's awareness. That's not fear. Fear works against awareness. Because I'm in the clinch <laughs> when I should be figuring out, okay, can I move away or what do I need to do? So why is this fear? Audre Lorde talks about we're injected with, you know, fear with our mother's milk. Many of us got that. Particularly if you are in a black body, that conversation comes early and you a woman, a little girl, you know, don't, don't, you got to keep your legs a certain way. Uh, Cause if you don't have the right posture, you'll be sending out a message. You fine. And you got to worry about inviting in danger. And that doesn't go anywhere. I think the invitation is, what would it be to be not with the fear of that, but the awareness and the illumination of that, that can create greater capacity, greater awareness, greater creativity, greater fearlessness. Witches are in the dark. Them heathen women dancing naked in the dark, they out there. Men too, but you know, I'm gonna talk to what I know about, you know, doing things in the dark. What's happening in hell? Did people always make these connections? I would think that our ancestors would have died of ulcers if they 
if if they stayed in the state of fear that some of us in, we wouldn't have made it to this point. So clearly something is wrong in the way these words, these perceptions that were given. And the curiosity for those of us on this path, for me, are we bleaching practices like people all over the world bleaching skin? Are we trying to take the darkness out? Because we want to be enlightened. We want And we'll follow different people, you know, different situations, different relationships, because we don't want to be in the dark by ourselves. And we don't want to be with the truth that there will be an exhale without an inhale at some point. And we'll be in the dark. What does it mean? One of my favorite poems is by Wendell Berry. To go in the dark with the light is to know the light. To know the dark, go dark, go without sight, and find that the dark too blooms and sings and is traveled by dark feet and dark wings. You have to cultivate some trust in the dark or go crazy. Right. Yeah. The, the, the primal screen won't go on together. Some of you have seen these movies. I think there's even a funny one where the guy, you know, it falls into a well and he screams and screams and screams. And at some point he keeps falling and he runs out of screen. So now I'm just, I'm just falling. I'm just, okay, I'm falling. This is what this is, I'm falling. So now he had to come out of screen and go into awareness at some point. There is so much richness available to us on this freedom path. And we have to choose if we want to do it. This is particularly important for those of us who are outside the parameters of what is light and bright and able and young and fertile. What is the practice? say this is what this is I mean I think certainly my lineage and the lineage of any peoples but I'll speak to mine but first you got to go into your lineage that's a thing is yes this happened and we're in darkness we do have samsara, and I'm always curious about how those of us on this path can respond to the constant state of samsara. Right? I don't want to be shady, but, but where the sunflowers at? Didn't we have sunflowers a while ago? And they still getting blown up. Not the Russians. And of course, there's Sudan. 
and Haiti and Venezuela, basically the entire planet. We're in the dark. This is also a place of creativity. It's all there. It's all there. In the dark. And what would it be? Be with the illumination to be found there. Not in the false, toxic positivity about everything's going to be all right. Because everything has never been all right. It's been. I mean, there's times of joy and times of heartbreak. Basically, everybody here is a human being, so I don't need to, to, to go through the list of things that occur on this, on this path of living consciously, unconsciously. But I think particularly what is difficult for those of us who have chosen to be awake, not in say enlightened, because that's a whole other construct that I have some words about, but not appropriate for here. But you know, I'm talking to be awake, to be what to be free, even as we are locked up. Because we locked up. <laughs> we all do in some level of capitalism. Cause that's how I have electricity and Zoom and and should I be ashamed about I'm locked I'm locked up. <laughs> I got born. And I got born here. And that's what we're doing. In the dark. What can I trust when somebody wants to roll up on me and say, why aren't you crying? Because fill in the blank. I have a right and you have a right to your own tears at your own time. Because we in the dark. We locked up. But the practice said, yeah, you locked up. You locked in this human body, depending on the expression, the history of it. But when everybody blows out the candles, cut off BG&E, cut off the gas and, the, and electricity, the illumination is to be had in the darkness. Some of us been broke, some of us been homeless, some of us been... You know, we started at one place and now we're in another place and people that used to respect us that don't respect us no more because why did you do that? And The courage it takes once you open your eyes that puts you, puts us <laughs> at odds with the world to know that, yeah, I got to pay the bills because if you've ever been homeless, you don't want to do that. I'm just saying, if you got to, you know, that's, that, that's, that's not a badge of courage. I know some people want to make poverty like, oh, that's so well, like people choose that shit. But we don't, you know, we don't have to worry about commiserating. I don't believe with other people we can have compassion to be with. Because I've never slept on the street, but some of us know what it's to be homeless, and some of us knows what it, what it is to be homeless at home in a house. Let me put it that way: homeless at your house. The embrace, first of all, the interrogation of these words, these constructs that we're given, that support, it's more than supporting racism. It's 
it's a, it supports befouling our very nature. And we know there's something wrong and we move into despair. But we don't have to be in prison. You know, it, it, well, some of y'all never had, didn't have relatives in jail, but I have. And so, you know, there's prisoners and there's convicts. Okay. And prisoners are, par you know, they're parasitic. They, you know, they don't, they don't have any honor. They don't, you know, basically they they make it impossible for folks to do their time. They make it more difficult for folks to do their time. Convicts are folks that says, yeah, I'm locked up, but I'm still a human being. So I'm gonna follow some rules here. You know, a more noble version is, you know, Nelson Mandela. He was locked up for 27 years. You know, I know we look at, you know, again, we I, I'm just so over romantic, romanticizing shit. Cause it again, it it pulls us out of the reality and also the grace of, of our lives. You know. The practice is calling us to come out of the cell that we created and move into the darkness, the awareness that, yeah, we we in this prison. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I don't need a cell. I'm just walking around the joint doing what I gotta do. You know? Because being locked up does not mean that I am diminished, that I am not enough, that if I hadn't been running the streets or if I got in a relationship or if I had gotten married when I was 27 with the rest of the girls and boys, or if I had that right love or if I had left them, you still be locked up. <laughs> But coming out of the cell, I'm not in prison. I'm, I will not create. I will not accept words that imprison me. You know? I will reframe and reframe and reframe what will support my freedom. So... That's, I think, is something that we can work with because on this path, this wild path that we're on, it's not the cultivated path, you know. I mean, you know, some the, the, the gardener didn't come, the, the the you know the lawn man didn't come. They then the the tree fell down and nobody cut it out the way. But it's it's a mess because because we messy, you know that. But this wild path that we're on, requires a cultivation of, of trust, of that stillness within, that that illumination of this darkness that allows us to, you know, sometimes we, we striving, but you know, sometimes we crawling, sometimes we crawling for a long time. Some of us got scabs, you know. I'm fearful of two things with people, I meet people. Those without scabs, 
and those that are clutch pearls. If you grown and you hear some shit and you make sure you want to go, ew, I, I, I got questions. You know? Either you are creating and choosing to create this, this innocence that have no doubt done terrific harm to people and probably to yourself. And you are working, I'm talking about grown people, or you are working very hard not to know the shit that you know. And since I'm human, of course I've done that shit. And if you have not done that shit, you will be doing that shit. I don't think anybody gets gets out of it. Um, it's different permutations of it, but but the gift of coming here, and I'll, I'll sort of end with him. The story, Mushum Akita, my girl in EBMC. Um, you know, that turtle that comes up every thousand years from the bottom of the ocean, and that lay is, is floating on the top of the ocean, and the turtle comes up and the lay just lays. That's the gift of this path to choose to do this. That's why Buddha said, I'm going to the beach because nobody's going to do this shit. And particularly in 2023, where we can at least for a time credit card our way out of it, uh, you know, sex our way out. You know, we got we got uh, hindrances that when it's food, shelter and clothing, you know, there's a certain awareness. My grandmother used to say each generation becomes wiser and weaker. You know, and we know more and have less capacity. That's what I've seen over the course of my 70 years. You know, and my grandmother would look at how I'm moving and go, mm, you slow. You know, I don't know. Maybe we need to. Mm -hmm. But to have found this path in these conditions of toxic plenty is a gift beyond compare. So I'm glad to be here with my fellow convicts. Who, you know, locked up and aware of the possibilities of the dark practice, the unashamed practice. They can be with it all without fear. So I thank you for listening this evening. And yeah, perhaps I'll pay some music and folks can go take care of their needs. And then we're going to come through with sharing your wisdom. And uh, yeah, we got plenty of time. And sharing your wisdom of the dark or whatever you want to share it with about. And um, and then maybe rather than just do that, we can have a round of sharing. And then we can just talk, okay? Like if y'all were in my living room and let go of that. One of the other things, and I will share this, one of the other things I'm interrogating is If we set a container of love and care and support, what, what would be the practice to know I'm included without explicitly saying everything is included? And perhaps the interrogation might be why do I think I'm not included? Because words don't include us. I work for lawyers. Words is like, yeah, I work for lawyers. And so that's one of the other things, trying to find safety in language rather than experience and connection. 
So anyway, thank y'all. I'm going to play some music. Go get some tea, some water, some Jack Daniels, whatever you're doing. And, uh, I, I, and I'll come back when the music is off and I'll pause this thing. Thank you. 